nice uh, quick video, uh, low production talking video. Uh, a lot of people seem to like them with some technical info. Um, we're, as you've all noticed, we've stopped uh, the daily ups upload uh, stream, uh, which um, is not it's not possible to do that all the time. So when I'm in America, uh, I usually try to shoot all the videos every day and then edit them every evening uh, which basically is like two three hours of work even with uh, the simplicity of my video so it's just not something that i can keep doing uh, back home when i'm uh, still running my shop of course it's really nice to be back um, although of course here's a lot's going on everything is closed and everything is way more expensive like gas is uh, over 10 gallon uh, uh, or 10 over 10 bucks for a gallon over here and uh, yeah for the three months I've been in America it's been very difficult uh, right now getting used to uh, what everything costs over here it's not just fuel it's also uh, food and heating and everything is like really really crazy um, so uh, that kind of sucks on the other hand it's nice to see all my friends and and, uh, and my crew again and all the guys I work with and my clients so I really happy uh, uh, to see those guys again uh, and of course missing America very much uh, but there's going to be really nice things happening in America soon uh, for me and I hope I can share all those plans with you guys um, as quickly as possible so one of the things I want to talk to you guys about in this video as you can see I'm recording it uh, when I'm driving so sorry if, uh, if it's difficult to hear I'll try to speak up a little bit uh, but I just want to make a little video and uh, judging from how the other tech explained videos uh, get likes and uh, uh, comments uh, some of the things where I'm just driving in my car explaining things uh, video gets way more views than like the one we did in Willow Springs which has a lot of drifting with uh, many different cars a really nice GoPro footage really nice drone footage uh, it took me like five and a half hours to make the video but it gets like half the views of the videos where I'm just turning my phone on in the car and talk about technical stuff so I guess that's what you guys uh, want to hear on this channel so what I want to talk about today um, is rear ends and the rear end to me is really really important uh, on the car because it determines a lot and a lot of people I've touched on the subject before where in the in the podcast style video where I'm explaining which chassis uh, you can uh, uh, which motivation you'll have to use a certain chassis uh, but I think rear ends uh, differentials or however you want to call them are super important uh, when you're building a car and you should really think about them before you start building um, I once read in a hot rod magazine a long time ago that a really good place to start building your car was from the rear end um, and I didn't really I was like 10 years old when I read that and I didn't really understand what they meant but now uh, it actually applies to our sport of drifting a lot uh, and it's because of a simple reason um, I see a lot of failures happening uh, with rear ends uh, with uh, drive shafts with uh, the, the the half shafts or how you guys want to call them so just to get things clear because that's very difficult for me um, the, the shafts that go from the differential to the wheel I always call them half shafts or drive shafts uh, a lot of people uh, call the act that what I would call the propeller shaft which is the the drive shaft between the transmission and the differential they call that a drive shaft and I always call that a prop shaft so it's a little bit difficult so i'll just keep referring them as half shafts for uh, the, the ones with the cv joints that go between the differential uh, and the wheel and uh, the drive shaft is the one between the transmission uh, and the rear end so that's like for right now that's what we're gonna stick with otherwise half this video is going to be explaining the semantics so if you look at if you look at it this way uh, if you run a certain motor, let's say you run a 2JZ or a RB or an M50 turbo or you run a V8 engine, uh, you can run an American V8 or a BMW or Mercedes or Ford, whatever kind of V8, of course Ford's American V8, but 
anything you can run. You can almost make those motors do whatever you want to do. So let's say you want a thousand horsepower 2JZ, which does 9,000 RPM, uh, or you want a really cheap 2JZ that does 450 RPM, uh, 450 horsepower, uh, and maxes out at like 7,000 RPM. It's all possible. So you can you can work with a motor real easily. Um, find out what you want from it, how much power you want from it, what RPMs you want from it, uh, and work with that. Uh, the transmissions is going to be a little bit more difficult um, and the rear end as well so of course you can get different ratios for different rear ends but it's not very economical if we take the uh, example of a BMW 210 rear end which is a really good rear end for drifting so it's the one that's in the E36 M3 E46 M3 it's in my drift week car E92 M3 uh, the uh, E60 M5 and all those cars have what's called a 210 diff which means that um, the crown wheel has a diameter of 210 millimeter. Uh, for reference, a quick change is 254 millimeter or 10 inch. That's why quick change is called a 10 inch rear end. Um, so the BMW 210 is a really good differential. I've been drifting with them for many, many years, but a used rear end right now, uh, E46 rear end in Europe, is between 1,000 and 1,500 euros. Um, then they have a 346 ratio, which is not a bad ratio for drifting. It's also not fantastic. You, you could run that differential, uh, but as soon as you want to go a little bit shorter, let's say you want to run a 391 or a 410, which is a very popular ratio for pro drifting like DMAC, FD. Uh, a lot of guys that I work with uh, tell me what ratios they run because we sell transmissions and we sell rear ends and I sell a lot of quick change ratios. So I know what most people run and in competitive drifting most guys will run uh, anywhere between 3.9 and 4.2 so to speak. Um, if you would like to get uh, BMW 210 into that ratio it's going to cost you a lot of money uh, because the, the gear set's going to be like a thousand euros but it needs to be mounted in the differential it needs to be clocked so uh, the clearance needs to be set um, and, and uh, all that stuff needs to be done by specialized people like you can try to do it from a YouTube video but there's a lot of people uh, that I've experienced that actually tried to do it themselves and the first if they did uh, failed like almost instantly um, we actually had a differential that I bought that was rebuilt by a guy and I put it in my black car it was a 210 differential and I drove it basically off the lift and into our parking lot and it immediately uh, made a weird sound and it failed Um, so that really doesn't work very well uh, to do that yourself. I would always recommend to take it to a shop to get that done properly because they'll have the proper tools and everything. So that's like my kind of thing. So if you buy a BMW 210 differential, uh, you're going to spend another thousand bucks in parts to make it a 391 or a 410 or a 427. Uh, so your tally is going to be on 15, uh, 1500 or let's say a thousand plus a thousand plus two thousand plus some labor so you're already on 2500 bucks and it's still uh, an old differential so you still haven't done any rebuilding no new bearings nothing like the flanges are old the old differential is old uh, you use aluminum uh, lid on the back where, where the differential is suspended on uh, which can fail like if you do a lot of clutch kicks and stuff you can break that cast aluminum uh, deck lid so if you, if you think along those lines, it's the same with the Nissan GTR diff, which is also a very popular diff. Um, if you want to modify that into the correct ratio and all that stuff, it's, it's just going to cost you way more than two grand. And there's a lot of guys that say, yeah, but I have them laying around and I already have them, so they cost me nothing. But that's not really true, because if you sold them, let's say you have three of them laying around, if you sold them, uh, you would make three grand. Uh, even if you got them for free so just because you didn't pay for it doesn't mean it doesn't have that value it's the exact same value um, so that's why uh, we tend to run the quick changes right now I don't want to like blow my own horn like oh, I sell the quick changes and it's so convenient but we before I sold quick changes I, I bought a lot of them uh, before we became a dealer for them because you need to buy a lot of them before you can be a dealer it's not like you can buy two or three and then become a dealer like you need to do a pretty pretty big amount of them every year to, to stay a, a dealer um, and those rear ends are the same weight as a BMW 210 differential uh, but you can uh, very easily change 
uh, the ratios in them of course quick change needs no introduction and if it does need any introduction check out the video that we've done on quick changes which explains them completely so if you uh, think about it on the economic levels like a quick changes the, the the cheapest ones we have are around three thousand bucks um, and um, uh, the big boy ones that are ran in FD, they're around four grand. Uh, we have uh, lots of upgrades in them, so they're not standard, like there's more than 20 parts in them that are upgraded uh, from all the, the, the oil rings and the, the, the bearings and everything. Almost everything inside the differential is upgraded, which is necessary for drifting. And we run a custom setback, uh, so the clearance between uh, the crown and pinion wheel and all that stuff is different in the ones that we have versus a standard with this quick change. So the thing with those things are that they'll cost a little bit more than a BMW 210 or a GTR diff, but it has a lot of advantages. Uh, one big advantage, of course, is that it's really easy to change the ratios, like the ratios are like 80 bucks a piece. Um, you can change them out in five minutes. So you have a huge advantage there. It's one of those things that people that I sell a quick change, um, they will be uh, on the fence, like, oh, do I really need it? Because it's just a car that I like. I'm not really a hardcore competition guy. Then they put it in a car and then they change ratios all the time and they send me a text message saying like hey man uh, we're, we're changing the ratios all the time it's really a big game changer and it is because um, it, it's, it's very convenient to be perfectly geared for a racetrack um, and once you've been to a track once it's very easy to write down of course uh, and determine which ratio you want to run and put it in the car already uh, back home so it makes a lot of sense uh, also, when something is wrong, let's say that your motor is hurt or your transmission is hurt, uh, you can work around that with a quick change uh, with the adjustability. Uh, so that's why I'm saying, like, if you work, uh, if you start building the car from the rear end out, uh, it's going to be very convenient because you'll be able to run a certain type of prop shaft, so what I would call the drive shaft between the transmission and the, and the gear and the differential, um, because on the quick change the, the joint bolts directly to the quick change flange so on most differentials you have a round flange and on that flange you bolt uh, like a CV joint uh, or an X joint or whatever with U joints uh, X joint with U joints so the U joints are basically the forks and what I call the X joint is like the thing with the needle bearings uh, that gives it uh, the possibility to move uh, up and down so on the quick change it's really nice that um, those U joints are directly uh, mounted to the differential uh, you don't have any flanges or nothing, so no bolts that can come, uh, come no extra bolts that can come off. Uh, it's also very nice for the trajectory, so the closer it sits to uh, the, the center line of the differential, the better for the, for the axle. Uh, and if you work from there on out and you run an actual racing transmission, uh, or you run an American style transmission like a Tremec, uh, you could run a slip yoke, uh, which is basically a spline shaft that goes into the transmission in the back, so you don't run the rubber disc anymore which like uh, uh, road car transmissions will have I really like that system because it's very easy to take the drive shaft, drive shaft in and out of the transmission it just slips out there's a little bit of room so let's say you have a ridiculous crash and you just really go backwards into the wall with like a hundred mile an hour there's a little bit of room uh, for the slip yoke to move so you probably won't be hitting your transmission with that um, and uh, uh, it's going to be a single piece uh, drive shaft, so a prop shaft drive shaft. So it's basically going to be um, very easy to make for a, for a shop that makes these uh, shafts. Um, and you won't have the possibility to fail the joints that are in the middle uh, or the center support bearing, which I had failed on my M3. Uh, they fail regularly on all kinds of cars. And if you have a lot of power in the car, uh, it could be dangerous because if you don't run a drive shaft loop, the whole thing can come. Uh, crashing into the floor of your car um, so it's, it's kind of nice to run a one-piece shaft uh, run a drive shaft loop of course just to be sure and run a slip yoke into the transmission and run a direct bolted u-joint uh, onto the uh, differential um, if you work that way you can also work with a wider variety of gear ratios so a lot of transmissions racing transmissions uh, are available with custom ratios transmissions that I sell you can choose the ratio yourself and if you have a quick change you have just a lot more bandwidth in that so there's a lot of guys that will run a certain transmission 
uh, because it came in a Toyota Supra or because it came in a diesel BMW and the gear ratios really don't match and then you need to find uh, really strange ratios for your rear end which is going to be very costly because the diesel transmission obviously uh, could be a completely wrong uh, ratio uh, for drifting um, because it's made for a road car for instance the first gear uh, in a road car is made for uh, uh, parking the car or towing a trailer um, driving with a trailer up a mountain so the first gear is going to be really short it's going to be over a three and a half so it could be like a, a 380 or a 390 uh, ratio which is not uncommon um, which is way too short so if you have a car uh, you're, you're drifting your car you're racing your car the first gear in a road car transmission is going to be so short that you can't even take your hand off the stick shift so you have your hand on the stick shift in first you just let it go and it immediately builds revs and it just you you, you can't you don't even have time to let go of the stick shift because you need to go to second real quick so the first gear is way too short in road car transmissions for most drift in drifting applications so that's a nice thing with the four speed with the nascar style transmission is that you can run a four speed which is basically a five speed transmission without a first gear so it doesn't like a fifth gear because the fourth gear is one on one and most road car transmission the fifth gear is one on one so you're running a transmission which you're basically launching in second but the second gear you can take that a little bit shorter so you can go with a 2.5 or 2.6 or 2.7 uh, second or first gear in a racing transmission in a nascar transmission so that's a nice thing like if you start building from the rear end um, and you have a quick change you say like, hey i spent all my money on the quick change i don't have any money for nascar transmission you can still work with a standard supra or bmw diesel or whatever transmission because um, you can just work around that with uh, with the rear end so you can run like a really low ratio you could run a, a 3.2 rear end or, or even lower to accommodate for that super short first gear it's not ideal but it's better than running a 410 or a 391 and run a really short first gear so uh, of course there's applications where a bmw m3 346 differential is going to work really well with a diesel transmission but you're also going to run into a lot of situations where it's really not ideal to have that setup um, and there's no bandwidth like i said there's nowhere you can go so if you have a really expensive motor let's say you have a jay-z that does 9000 rpm or you have an ls that does 8000 rpm uh, you could get away with like the wrong ratio in the transmission the wrong ratio uh, in the rear end because you have so much bandwidth but a motor that does that, that rpm and has that power level it's also going to break uh, a road car transmission and it's going to break a road car rear end and uh, the style of drive shaft uh, prop shaft that uh, that road car transmission needs to adapt with the rubber donut and um, uh, with, with the center support barrier barrier carrier bearing uh, that's definitely not going to work if you run a thousand horsepower 2jz or 800 horsepower uh, v8 motor so that's a couple thoughts on that so like i always said start working with your rear end because a a rear end is difficult to change going to be expensive so make sure that you that you start with the right ratio on your rear end because the motor you could work with the motor a lot easier so you could basically work with the cam or you can work with the turbo or with the mapping to make to shift the power band of the motor which is a little bit easier than shifting the power band of the transmission and the power band of the rear end so if you start with the rear end let the rear end dictate what kind of transmission you're going to run. In the case of a quick change, it's, it's very convenient to run a slip yoke, uh, American style uh, drive shaft. Of course, uh, the, the quick change, we make uh, uh, half shafts for them. So it's not difficult uh, for us uh, to produce them along with the quick change. And it's uh, also very nice the quick change is a symmetrical diff. So you have the same axles on the left and on the right. Uh, so you basically would only need one spare um, so that's always my tip like think if you're building a car even if it's a missile car you're like hey i want to build an e36 or i want to build an s13 oh s13 is probably expensive for missile cars but let's say you want to build some kind of lexus ls drift car like a big body lexus drift car you're like hey what am i going to use because they're all automatic and i want to convert it to uh, manual transmission think about what rear end you're going to run because if, if, if that car only comes with a super tall rear end, let, let's say because it's automatic, it'll be a 2.7 or a 2.8 rear end. It's really not gonna be a great car if you also have really tall gearing. Um, it will work, like I said, with a, with a 20 grand uh, full pro motor, but that kind of defies the point of a missile car. 
So I'm saying like, if you have like an affordable motor, let's say a budget built M50 turbo or uh, an LS1 or an LS3 crate motor or a standard uh, 2J or one and a half J or one J or whatever, um, then you really want to have your gear ratios in your rear end correct. Yeah, so it's kind of a mismatch. If you're on a cheap motor, you want to have a really good transmission and gearbox ratio. Um, so that kind of sucks. So you, 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 I always say like you can you can either run like a road car transmission and and rear end and have a motor that's very capable of working in all rev ranges, but then it's probably going to break all those road car parts. Or if you have a cheap motor, you're like hey like Rudy Hansen, he runs uh, I think it's an LS1 in the in the red in the yeah, in the yellow greenish car in the S13 hatchback which is not the most expensive motor. I think it's just a camped LS1 with heads on it or something like that. He, he has a dog box in that car and he has uh, the, the, the budget style LS1 build, um, but he was constantly swapping out rear ends uh, with that car. So um, that's like typically the kind of car you wanna run a, a quick change in because the motor simply doesn't have the revs or the power to work in the wrong gears. Um, so there was a really good example, like uh, Rudy changed the differential, like I think three or four times on Drift Week, because it just didn't match. Um, so that's my tip, uh, start working from the rear end. Uh, if you have the right rear end and the right transmission, uh, you can basically be a little bit cheaper on the motor. So let's say that you're like, hey, I'm gonna build a really gnarly um, LS. I would say get a really gnarly transmission and get a really gnarly quick change and run the LS on 450 or 500 horsepower before you really start splashing the money on a build motor, a high compression motor, a high RPM motor. Uh, because a lot of people do it the other way around. They build a really sick 2J or they build a really sick LS um, and then they kind of like skimp on the transmission and on the rear end, uh, which uh, which really is, isn't the way to go in my, uh, in my book. Like you wanna be a little bit overkill on the drive shaft, you want to be overkill on the half shaft, you want to be overkill on the transmission and on the rear end, and uh, it makes a lot of sense to save a little bit of money on the motor. Um, yeah, so that's my tip. Um, sorry for the bad quality and basically just recording. It's like so busy in the shop that I don't really have time to make a lot of videos. There's a couple of videos that I'm making on the cars that we're working on right now, cars that we're building in the shop, like my E36. Uh, there's a supercharged E46 that we're working on. Uh, there's, of course, the build video of my V8 uh, E46 and a couple other projects that we're doing. Um, so stay put for that. And I hope you guys can bear with me with these simple iPhone videos explaining some stuff. If you guys have any questions about technical stuff, you can always drop me an email. Uh, now it's getting really shaky because I'm driving on a bad road. Uh, it's kind of my cue uh, to hang up on you guys. Uh, thanks for riding with me. I uh, hope you learned a little bit and uh, see you on the next video. Don't forget to take a look at our website as well, einzel.nl. We ship worldwide, of course, Wise Fab, Feel Suspension, our own brand, Einzel, gearboxes, quick change differentials, axles, all kinds of things. A lot of fabrication components, of course, air jacks, subframes for quick change, you name it. Drop us an email and we'll hook you up.